We've suffered a lot in the past few years. Travel has been extremely restricted and the world has seemed to always be closed. But one day, when it will soon open up again, you will have plenty of exhilarating destinations to choose from. One place that you're likely not planning a trip to, however, is Manitoba. Manitoba is what's known as a drive-through province, a province that most Canadians and foreigners quickly pass from one end to the next in order to get to a more interesting province. It's flat, it's cold, it's empty, and even though geographically it's almost twice as large as Japan, the population of Manitoba is just 1.4 million, 1% of that of Japan. But I'm traveling across Canada, having started in Newfoundland in September and moving through all 10 Canadian provinces. So even though people have told me to completely skip over Manitoba, Manitoba, I can't, and I don't want to. So for the next 50 hours, I'll be here, here, and here, moving through the Canadian province that nobody is visiting. It's hard to find a place to start this adventure, but New Iceland seems appropriate. Now, make no mistake, New Iceland isn't in Iceland. It's actually a town in Manitoba called Gimli. But the reason why it's called New Iceland is because this is the world's largest Icelandic settlement outside of Iceland. So in 1875, the Canadian government granted Iceland a 58 kilometer reserve in Manitoba where they could all come here and move and they would be granted their own land. They'd be granted their own constitution, their own rights to their own language and whatever laws that they had previously in Iceland. This attracted a lot of Icelanders because in Iceland at the time, there were a lot of volcanoes, a lot of eruptions, a lot of famine, diseases, and the bitter cold, obviously. They didn't know what they were getting into when they moved to Canada. Over 20% of the population of Iceland at the time wanted a better life. So they decided to all come here and they formed what's known as New Iceland. I mean, this isn't even English, so you could tell that they all came to Canada, but they didn't even start speaking English. They were still speaking Icelandic. In the Olympics in 1920, the Winnipeg Falcons won the gold medal, and they consisted almost entirely of Icelandic Canadians. The Falcons earning Canada's first ever Olympic gold medal in hockey is said to be a defining moment, not just in hockey history, but it was also an event that drastically shifted outsider perceptions of Icelandic Canadians. They definitely did a good job coming here, because the Icelandic hockey team, I've never heard of them, so glad we have them here. Mike, one thing we've done in a few provinces, is we've always sent postcards. Oh yeah. Let's do it. These ones make it look like we've traveled further than we actually have. We're in Manitoba, but could be from Iceland. Thanks. Here's your card, sir. Thank you. Here's your pen, sir. Thank you. I'm going to write to two best friends who will be very surprised to receive a postcard from Gimli, Manitoba. I'm writing to Sharon. I think she'll really appreciate this. She likes little mementos like this. And I've never written her a card. Never written her a card, Will? All right, so I just wrote the card and I realized I have no idea where she lives. So I'm gonna have to call her and make something up. Hi. I have a question for you. Random question. I wanna, or, I wanna uh, order a package to your house. Can you tell me what the address yeah. is for me, please? I got her so bad. She doesn't know that she's actually getting a postcard from Gimli. Where is this from? Manitoba. Okay, nice. I knew you were asking my address for <laughs> Postcard is a very simple way to do an act of kindness for someone that you care about or even someone that you want to get to know better. It didn't cost a lot of money, didn't take a lot of time, but it has a big effect. All right, perfect. One thing I love about Gimli is that it's a small town, home to just under a thousand residents, and that means everything is close to each other. So when I went to the museum before, all I had to do is take a five minute walk and I get to this guy. Now the statue represents New Iceland and everything that it stood for. It is a commemoration of what the land used to be and the people that sacrificed everything they had to move into Canada, immigrate here and start a new life. And this Viking statue was unveiled in 1967. Doesn't seem that long ago, but if you're a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, well, this statue was unveiled the year you guys last won the Stanley Cup. That's a long time. Now I'm walking by this Viking statue and I notice a lot of different plaques here that have the big family name listed on the side of it. And if you can see, most of them end with son, S-O-N. Now this is a very common ending to a name in Iceland. Whether you're a boy or a girl dictates how your name ends up. So Thorstein's son means he's the son, he is the boy, but if he was the daughter, he could be John's Dotir. So if you're the son, your last name ends with S-O-N. If you're a daughter, your last name ends Dotir. Yeah! Yeah, here we go! Gimli! <laughs> New Iceland! Yeah! <laughs> 
We made it! Yeah. <laughs> well, you definitely can't say this is a unique place to visit. You've got the Manitoba flag, the Canada flag, and the Iceland flag all standing next to each other in cohesion. And that is what makes up the town of Gimli. Quite an interesting place and quite an interesting spot for a welcome sign, but it also has a great view of the sunset. Isn't this quite an interesting spot for a sunset? Yeah, I wouldn't have picked a spot looking over the highway, but it's a good backdrop. Yeah. It's as good as we're gonna get out here. There's no high point in Manitoba to no. <laughs> watch the sunset from. Oh. It took us a long time to figure out what we wanted to do for this next adventure in Manitoba. We spent a good amount of days and hours trying to plan this trip. Didn't find that much because we're in the wrong time of year. I think we've done a good job at making do with what we've had. It's a, a lot about just having a sense of adventure and the right person with you. Thanks. Friendship. All we need is a cold one and this would be perfect. But we'll replace that with a warm hug. To me, Gimli is a deeply rich and unique town tucked away in a part of Canada that most people ignore. But if there is any part of Manitoba that touches the hands of tourists, it's Winnipeg. Virtually half of the people in Manitoba live here, and while it may be recognized as Canada's coldest big city, it does have some interesting ways to heat you up. This is Yoga Public, the largest yoga studio in Canada. And to be showing Mike and I around today, we have Lori. And Lori, what do you have in store for us today? Uh, well, we're gonna do some yoga, we're gonna go in the hot room, and then we're gonna do some inversion and just play around a little bit. Very low lighting, we can't do <laughs> that. is hot. How hot is this? 38.4 degrees Celsius. Why hot yoga? North American culture likes intensity. Like in India, where yoga originated, you would do yoga early in the morning when it isn't super hot. Also in this climate, it's yeah. especially at this time of year, you walk into this room and it just feels, feels good. Why do you think we don't stretch as much? Well, I think people associate stretching with yoga and they either see themselves as practicing yoga or not, when really it's, it's more like brushing your teeth. Like yeah. you do it because you need to. You want to be healthy and you want other people to still be able to be in your presence. Do you have one piece of advice you would give to someone who's just trying to incorporate more wellness into their lives? Yeah, I would say don't compare yourself to other people, which I know you're going to do because we all do it all the time, mm -hmm. especially now. Your journey in your life is really separate from anyone else's and you just need to take those little steps that you enjoy and that are gonna make you feel good. <laughs> Bye, <baby. laughs> Thanks, Lori. Bye. Wow, oh my God, look at the change in temperature. Well, we've gotten our physical activity underway, but now I think it's time to go and explore this amazing spa. This is Thermea Spa, a $1.1 million property in Winnipeg that is strictly devoted to helping improve the mental and physical well-being of Winnipeggers all year round. And Janice here is the marketing manager and she's going to show us around. Yeah, welcome here. So Janice gave us an outline on how to properly enjoy this spa, so I'm going to bring you through it step by step. The first part of this experience is going into the hot finish sauna. And this is supposed to be done to get your blood flowing get your muscles relaxed, and get ready for the next activity. Stay in there for about 10 to 15 minutes, and the goal there is to sweat. There's a lot of benefits to sweating and letting your body, you know, detoxify in that way and open up your pores. Now, because we don't have any watches or technology on us, they have actually set up timers, which are just little hourglasses right here, and they last 15 minutes long, so when you start, Flip it here, the hourglass will start to fall, and then when it gets full, it'll tell you when your time is up and you're ready to get to the next activity. The second part is to do the cold dip, and when I tell you it's cold, oh baby, it's freezing. But you know what? The best part about this is that it teaches you how to get out of your comfort zone and try hard things, even when you're at a spa and you're supposed to be relaxing. But my legs are frozen, so let's move on to the next one. This is the third and final part of the cycle. This is the moderately temperatured pool. And it's supposed to help regulate your body temperature right again after being hot and then being cold. So this temperature is actually just room temperature. But when you get out of that freezing cold pool over there, well, definitely feels a lot more refreshing.
Once you've completed all three of these activities, that is what is known as a cycle. And the optimal recommendation for your time at the spa is to complete three of these during your stay. I can say just after doing one cycle that I already feel so much better and so much more relaxed. But as incredible as this whole thermal experience has been, it isn't even half of what this spa has. And this is Winnipeg, right? This is not like the Caribbean or Ibiza. This is Manitoba, Canada. And the fact that they can build something like this, well, that goes to show that every place that you visit has something special and has something worth discovering. You just gotta open your mind and go look for it. You know what? Winnipeg, I think, is often an overlooked city. I've lived here for 15 years. I've lived in Manitoba my whole life. It's really an exciting city to be in. And even in the 15 years I've lived in Manitoba, so much has happened. This video represents just a small glimpse of Manitoba. And while on our road trip, Mike and I did also make it out to find Manitoba's largest moose, the world's largest curling rock, and an Icelandic convenience store that was inconveniently closed. Three things that I guarantee almost none of you find particularly interesting. But maybe that is the magic in coming here. When you can learn to have fun in a part of the world that not many people want to be in, that teaches you how to make the most out of every situation. So maybe you might not want to visit Manitoba, but maybe you need to. Next week on Sprout, I am staying in Winnipeg to spend a night at the world's best curling club. Now this is the oldest curling club in Western Canada, and it's known around the country as the mother club of curling because it has produced so many Canadian and world champions. So if you're excited for that, well, consider subscribing because that is coming up in the next episode. I'm Will, and it's a mindset. I'll see you for the next one on the curling rink.